Hey guys, Chad Trofgerbin here. In this tutorial, we take a look at how to animate breasts in Anime Studio. Alright, so for this tutorial, as you can see, we already have a female character drawn up and ready to go. Now for this tutorial, we'll be focusing on two different ways to animate breasts for female characters. The first will be dynamic bones, and the second will be using your smart bone dial. Now, as you can see by this character, she has been gifted. Um, whether they are fake or not, I guess, is up to your judgment. And of course, it will depend on, you know, your character, what your character's backstory is. Of course, we here at Incredible Tutorials, we are men, and so we like certain things bigger than others. But... With that said, we can get started here, and first, we'll show you how we rigged this character up. Now, you'll notice that when we turn on the bone guides here, that the character isn't meant to do a whole lot. She was just rigged, mainly just for this tutorial, just so we can get some limited movement. But you can see that we can move the head, we can move the neck, we can move the arms, and we can move the torso. So you have some limited movement there, which will allow us to work with this as we move forward so that we can get some movement going. Okay, so we'll need to first select the center bone with our select bone tool and make sure that we are on the bone layer. We're going to create some bones for the breasts. So starting at the top on the right breast, we'll just hold and drag downwards to the bottom of the breast and then release. Now with your add bone tool still selected, you can hold an alt and then click on the center bone and then draw your other breast bone on the other side. Now we'll need to bind points to these bones because we have a few things going on here. As you can see with this female character, we have a folder for the breasts and inside there we have shadow, bikini top, breasts themselves, and then a drop shadow. And so we'll be going through each of these layers and doing certain things to make sure everything is good to go. So we'll select the left bone first and then take the bind points tool and then select the entire left breast and then click bind points. We'll do the same for the right side. Select bone and then we'll click on the bind points tool, select that entire right breast and then click bind points. Now, Coming in here, we'll work on the bikini top next. First, we want to bind the entire bikini to the center or spine bone. Then from there, we will branch out and do the different bindings for the breasts. So as you can see, it looks like we already have this working out here. But just to be safe, select that center bone, click the entire bikini, and then click bind points. Now select the left breast bone and then take the bind points tool and you're going to come down here and just select the points on the bottom of the bikini and then hit bind points. Then come over here to the right breast bone again bind those points just using the points on the bottom of the bikini and then click bind points. Coming over here to the shadow we can come in here same type of thing, click the bone. We're gonna bind the entire shadow, so just click bind points. Same for the right. Just click, click, click. Oh, and click as well. <laughs> so then you'll come down here to the drop shadow and we're gonna, once again, choose a breast. We'll start with the left. Take the bind points tool and now we're just gonna select just a couple points on the bottom to bind and we're gonna do the same for the right. So click that right bone, just select two points to bind and bind them. Now, I think we have bound everything that needs to be bound. The next thing we'll need to do is turn on bone dynamics. While you're on your bone layer, click on a bone, a breast bone, and turn on bone dynamics. The same will be for the left bone. Bone dynamics will be turned on, and you can leave everything at default. 
So now we'll need to create some movement for this character in order to see the dynamic bones take place. So we can advance forward to about frame 12 and we'll take the translate bone tool and we're going to come down here to the pelvis bone and click and then we can come over here to the timeline and we're going to advance forward to about frame 16 and then just move the character up with that translate bone tool. Now we'll advance forward to about frame 21 and then move the character back down. So this will allow us to see the dynamic bones work. Let's turn off guides, come in here and hit play, and you can see now the dynamic bones are at work. Because we turned on dynamic bones, we're getting that bounce effect. And because of how we bound everything, you're seeing that different areas have slightly different results. And this allows us to make some realistic looking breast physics. Unlike if we were to bind, let's say, the entire folder, that wouldn't work out so well. The breast folder that contained all the assets. You can also adjust the bone dynamic numbers if you want, if things aren't looking quite how you want them. And that's something that you can play around with. Right now it's looking pretty good, so I think we'll leave it as is. But from here now, it's all a matter of just continuing to play with this and maybe even add some more movement to the character. So we can come back here, take the translate bone tool, and then we can move, we'll click to create a keyframe and then we'll move her after a momentary pause here. We can move her back up and then we'll come over here to about frame 32 and then we will move her back down. So we can try this out again. And you can see as we're moving it through the timeline, we're getting some kind of wonky results. Don't worry about that. That's just how it previews. You're only going to know when you hit play and you're only really going to know when you render the file out. That'll give you the definitive version. But don't worry if your breasts are <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> it's, it's fine. So what we're gonna do now is add some body movements to the character, like the limbs. So we're gonna come in here on frame 12, we'll create some keyframes for the bone with the rotate bone tool. Then we'll go to frame 16, and we're just gonna tilt the head, the torso, maybe adjust the shoulders a little bit, bring in the hands slightly like that. And just to give us some more movement here to work with for the dynamic bones. And we can reset here when we come in to frame 12, make sure we're good there. And also make sure when you're setting these keyframes down that you control F to make sure that you are locking all of your bones in place. Always important to use control F when doing this kind of stuff. So we advanced forward to frame 21 and we're just gonna simply reset each bone just to kind of bring her back after creating the first movement, just like that. And then we will probably do this, let's see here, one more time. So we'll go to frame 27 and we'll just add more movement, kind of replicating what we did before. And then we can go to the next frame after that, which would be frame 32. And you could select each individual bone to reset or you can highlight all bones if you want, just with your Select bone tool, control A, and then you can just hit reset so that you can reset all the bones at once. So you can see now we have some different movement here in it. Adjust the dynamic breasts even more so that you have a little bit more going on here. And you can really see here just how it all plays out. Now if we want, we could even go a little bit further here and we could create a keyframe for the scale transform layer tool on frame 12 and then we could go to about frame 21 and then we could just enlarge the character a little bit and create a second keyframe on 23 and then enlarge at 32. Obviously this will create the effect that she's kind of bouncing towards us. So we can uh, zoom out a little bit here just to kind of see this whole thing play out then you can hit play and then 
she's bouncing forward. So that's what that will do. Now, next up, we're going to look at the smart dial effect for creating bones. And this will be a different effect, but we can also combine the effects as well. So let's focus in now on the smart dial effect here. And we've worked with smart dials here at Incredible Tutorials before for the head turn and so forth. So this is basically going to be the same thing. First, we'll need to select the female bone layer here and then come over here and just create a bone outside of the character, just like that. And we can turn the influence clouds off, if you, even if you have any going on right now. We don't really need those. And it doesn't need to be linked to the character. It can be if you wanted to, but we'll just leave it unlinked. And we can come in here with the bone constraints. And let's constrain this bone, because we are creating a dial here, to either 50 or 40. Let's go 40 and then click close. So with your smart bones, you need to create an action and we need to name the bone. So we'll name this BB for breast bounce. And we will then come over here to the actions panel. You can either go to window, actions, or you can use control K or command K if you're on a Mac. And we'll need to create a new smart bone action. Of course, when we make a smart bone action, it needs to be the same as the bone name. So name it BB and click OK. That's very important. We are now in the smart bone action. We are going to take the rotate bone tool and dial this to the left. And then we're going to come over here to our breast folder and we're going to go in first to just to the breast folder itself. And we're going to just transform layer tool and move the breast down a bit. Now we'll need to do some adjusting, of course, so we can first come in here to the bikini top layer. We're still in the smart bone action, by the way, and we're just going to take those top points and move them up so they match the neck. Same for the second set of points there, and we can do some minor adjusting here with the straps as well here. We can just kind of move those out a little bit just to kind of make it so it's reacting to the fact that the breasts have moved down. And once you've done that, we can go then to the drop shadow. You can see we've had some adjustments here now. So we'll need to come in here and we'll just need to move some things down a little bit. But we also have some intersecting now with the body. So you can take those points and just bring them in so that they're not intersecting anymore. Just kind of clean things up a little bit like so. Okay, now we can take the layer. I think we're good to go actually. We can go back out here to the main line and we can just take this dial now with the rotate or manipulate bones tool. And with that manipulate bones tool, we'll just simply come in here and move it to the left. And you can see we have the breasts move downward. So now we need to do the opposite. We'll create another action and name this BB2 because whenever you create an opposite action for a dial, you have to have the number 2 after it or 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. So we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take that breast folder and move it up with our transform layer tool. We're going to come in here with the bikini top and we're going to adjust those straps. So we can come in here and we can adjust the top portion of the straps down. Same with the middle-ish portion there of the strap on each side. And then we can do even a little bit more adjusting down here as well. Just like that. Okay, I think it's looking good. We'll then need to Come in here to the drop shadow and adjust it like we did before. Move those up a bit. Because since we're moving up, you know, we need to make that reflect that. And we need to come in here also and match the shadow sides to the sides of the body. So let's make sure everything's lined up, nothing's poking out at the top there. Come in here and do the same here for the right side. 
do some adjusting like that. And that's looking, I would say, pretty good. Okay. Come back out here to the main line by double clicking on main line. And we now have the opposite dial effect for that female character. So let's come out here to, let's say, about frame 72. And what we're going to do now is play with this dial a little bit and see what it does for us. So we will take the translate bone tool and make sure we can see the whole workspace here. We're going to click on that pelvis bone again. And then we will advance forward to about, let's say, 76, making sure we have the translate bone tool still selected, move her up and then we'll come down to 79 and then move her down. So we have another hop, basically. So now, when she's up in the air, we will move the dial to the left to make sure they're down, and then when she's at the last keyframe to the right to move them up. Now we will create another keyframe at 81 and move them to the left, and then we'll reset at frame 83, just to kind of give that hop an end there. So you can see now when she hops, they go up and down. And you can also, if you want, turn off your dynamic bones halfway through this. So you can actually turn them on and off, just like anything on the timeline. So we're going to select both of those bones and just turn those dynamic bones off. You can see it creates keyframes on the timeline for that. This will allow us to see the bounce effect for the dials without the dynamic bones. Because the way we're doing this, you can do it both ways. You could just have dynamic bones or you could have smart bones. It just depends on how you want to do it. And you can combine the effects to create some awesomely bodacious boobies, for lack of a better term. But again, it depends on how exaggerated you want to be. As you can see, our character design was pretty exaggerated. And it also depends just on how much bounce you want. So make sure you look at those dynamic bone settings, if that's what you choose to use, and just play with it and tweak it until you get it just right. But that about does it for me. I'm done looking at boobs for the day. Actually, I'm not. I can never say that. My name is Chad Trofgerben. Jim Mills recorded this tutorial and I narrated. If you'd like more incredible tutorials, you can visit IncredibleTutorials.com. We're also on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, guys. We have to bounce, but we will see you next time.